Welcome to Smart Benefits online enrollment training. During this brief video, we'll show you how to use Smart Benefits online enrollment from both an employee and employer's perspective. It's a four-step process. First, as the employer, you need to share your Smart Benefits organization code with new enrollees. You could do this, for example, uh, via a new employee orientation kit. Second, your new enrollee will use the organization code to submit their Smart Benefits enrollment request via their SmartTrip account. Third, you log into your Smart Benefits web application and approve or reject uh, each enrollment request. And then last, your enrollee will receive an email notification of your decision. If you approve a request, the SmartTrip card number for your employee is automatically added to your employee list with a proper kickoff date and a proper benefit category. And your enrollee can now access that information. They can see what benefit category they have. They can see the effective date of their enrollment via their Smart Benefits dashboard, which they can see through their SmartTrip account. Next, I'm going to show you how to retrieve your organization code. I've already logged into our Smart Benefits test account here at WMATA. And uh, to retrieve your organization code, you would click on Account Admin and then Self-Service. And the code will be in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. So in this case, this is our code right here. So let's assume I'm a new employee and I have my SmartTrip card. I've already registered to, to my SmartTrip account. And I've uh, clicked on that card number to get to the card summary screen. And in the bottom right corner, you, as you can see, there's a Join Smart Benefits link. I'll click that link. And that will bring me to the first page in the enrollment request process. The instructions are right here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, key in the organization code. I've keyed the code in. I'm checking the checkbox indicating I agree with the terms and conditions. And I click Submit. I'm going to get a verification box to confirm that I'm with the right company. In this case, it's our test account, WMATA 4.8, which is where our IT organization is located. I'm going to go ahead and click Yes. And that brings me to the next screen. So the screen has a few components on it. The top part uh, indicates, again, what my organization is and who my Smart Benefits Administrator is. Uh, in this case, we have some test information. Of course, if this was your company, it would be uh, your name and contact information. The next box indicates the earliest Smart Benefits date. Uh, and that is uh, on the screen, October 1st, 2019, because today is August 28th, 2019. And that would be the earliest possible start date, provided that you approve the request no later than September 15th of 2019. If you didn't approve the request by then, then this date uh, automatically updates in the system and it would change out to November and December and so forth. Uh, it all depends on when you as the employer approve the request. The bottom portion of the screen has the information that we retrieve from the uh, new enrollees Smart Trip account. Uh, so you see the card number, uh, their Smart Trip email address. And then we encourage them to add a work email address because we think that'll make it easier for you to communicate with them. In the end, we're going to display to you on the enrollment screen whichever email address they prefer to use for you to communicate with them should there be any questions during the enrollment process. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the work email address. And I'm just going to pick Smart Benefits. And I'll click Save. And as you can see, it's right there. And by picking the work email address, we change the default from the SmartTrip email address to the work email address automatically. I'll click Continue. And that brings me to the screen where the employee is going to go ahead and enter uh, their desired monthly commuter benefit amount. And what we've done is we've broken the screen out into several modes of transportation so that uh, we make sure the employee is thinking about all the different ways they can spend their SMART benefits.
So in this case, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to put in that I want $205 in uh, Metro for Metro, and I want $85 for parking. For a total of $209. And I'm sorry, $290. And we'll click uh, continue. So the next page uh, is matching my desired benefit to what benefit categories you've already established in your system. Uh, and since it didn't get a perfect match in this case, it's giving me the closest three categories uh, to my request. And again, since this is a test system, it's very limited, but uh, I do see one that's pretty close, option one, that has 200 in transit and 65 for metro parking. And I'm going to go ahead and pick that one. And once I do, the continue button lights up. I click continue. I get a confirmation box. Yes, my card number. Yes, that's the right email. Yes, that's the right benefit category for a total of $265 a month. I click confirm. And I get come to the final screen that says uh, my enrollment request has been submitted. Uh, it's been sent to my employer for review and I'm going to receive an email notification once my employer acts on my request. I will also receive an email confirmation immediately that indicates that has this information in it uh, as well. So what you now see on the screen is the acknowledgement email that the your employee would receive immediately after uh, submitting their request and it's confirming their benefit category. It's telling them uh, in this case, because this is not the same email that I'm using in the example that they're uh, Enrollment date would be October 1st. If this was a live example, it would be uh, October 1st. And then uh, if they have any questions, they can contact their organization Smart Benefits uh, Administrator. Uh, and at the same time, uh, what will happen on their uh, SmartTrip account is the link that said join Smart Benefits will now turn to request pending. And I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so I'm uh, back on the SmartTrip card account, uh, and you can see down here, Smart Benefits, it says Request Pending. If I click on that link, it will show me uh, all the information for my card, uh, as well as who my Smart Benefits Administrator is, that my request is pending, and that the earliest effective date is October 1st, 2019, that I submitted my request on the 28th of August, and this is what I've requested. Now, one thing you may note uh, as you're looking at this is that the uh, card name shows up as uh, Jan TH. Uh, again, this is a test card, um, but it's not the same as the card nickname that was on the card summary screen because this is the name that the card was registered in in our FAIR collection system. Uh, and so that is different from the nickname that you would see uh, right here on the screen, which is labeled nickname. Uh, to see the uh, the name that the card was registered in, uh, you would check update card information here. And as you can see right there, it says Jan TH. Okay, so from here, I'm going to take you back to the employer side and uh, the new enrollment tab uh, where you can approve or reject this request. So here we are back at the uh, employer web app for Smart Benefits under Program Management, Enrollment, and the tab is uh, in red, uh, indicating that there are pending requests. And as you can see, there we have uh, Jan TH with the last 44407, the uh, work email address that I entered, the date I entered it, the kickoff date, which you can modify going forward, you can't modify going backwards. Uh, the uh, benefit category that was uh, selected by the employee, the total monthly benefit amount, and a space where you can enter um, your own user-defined key. So for example, if you wanted to enter a department name or some other identifier for that employee. So a key uh, component of this screen is the monthly benefit column. 
So if you are doing, for example, a pre-tax payroll deduction for the, your employees, this would be the figure that you would be keying in on because that's the amount uh, that you would want to deduct from your employee's paycheck every month. Uh, so you would be logging into your payroll system, setting up that deduction. Uh, once you're satisfied that everything's in place, you would then click your employee's uh, checkbox to the left. Once you do that, the buttons enroll and reject light up. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and uh, click enroll. You'll get a uh, confirmation uh, box popping up. You'll click OK. And when we do this, uh, the employee's name is going to uh, disappear from this screen because this is uh, working as a to-do list. And it will be, and uh, your employee's card will automatically be entered into the employee list and they will be enrolled. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And we've got the success message that the enrollment request was process successfully. So now switch over to the employee list and uh, sure enough, there's a Jan TH and their card number. They have an enrolled status. The uh, kickoff date will be October 1st, 2019. Uh, their benefit category is a T200P65 and uh, we did this on August 28th. So at this point, uh, from an employer perspective, you're all done. Uh, your employee will now receive an acknowledgement email and uh, let, letting them know uh, when that they in fact have been approved and uh, when their start date is. But uh, before I show you that, um, I do wanna mention that uh, you as the employer will receive a notification email as well if there are pending requests in your queue. So this is the email you receive as an employer if there are pending requests. Um, you'll receive them three times a month, uh, well, or up to three times a month. And uh, for most of you, uh, if you have an uh, order deadline of the 15th of the month, you'll receive them on the 5th, the 10th, and the 15th, but only if there are pending requests. If there are no pending requests, there's no notification email. If you do get it, though, this is your trigger to uh, look in the system and uh, verify uh, or check out the request and act on it. So for the next step, I'm going to uh, take you back to the Smart Trip uh, account for the employee and uh, show you how things look now that you've approved their request. Okay, so here we are back uh, to the card summary page for the employee Smart Trip card. And you can see down here in the Smart Benefits section where it previously said request pending, it now says manage Smart Benefits. That means they're enrolled, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they've uh, started uh, receiving benefits yet. And I'll touch on that in a moment. Um, this is our pop-up again, uh, they are agreeing to the terms and conditions, we'll say yes. And you can see again, here's the basic information for their smart trip card, the basic information regarding uh, their smart benefits administrator. Um, they are enrolled, but the effective date of the enrollment is October 1st, 2019, as we've shown all the way along. And, uh, and that's when their benefits will start. And in this case, uh, once again, their upcoming monthly benefit is $265 total, 200 for transit and $65 for parking. And so they're in the system and they can start enjoying smart benefits starting on October 1st uh, in this particular case. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your smart benefits account executive. Have a great day.